Hey YouTube, how's it going? My name is Jonathan, and in this video I've got something really exciting for you. I'm going to be get counting down the very best ultrabooks you can get right now for under $1,000. Getting an ultrabook can be really exciting, but a lot of them cost a lot of money, and the truth is you can get a really good ultrabook for under one grand. In this video, I'm going to be going over the ultrabooks that I consider to be the best value. Some of them are cheaper and some of them are more expensive, but all of them I think are a really good deal for the price you're paying. So with that said, let's just go ahead and get started. Coming in at number 5 in this video is the Lenovo ThinkPad E580, which you could make the case isn't really an ultrabook since it weighs 4.7 pounds and is reasonably thick at 0.8 inches, but it's definitely right on the border of what I would consider to be pretty thin and light, and the truth is, it's just a really, really good deal. This laptop starts at only $699 and it's got solid performance, a wide port selection, and a really good build quality. You can get this laptop for either $700 or $750. The $700 version has a low resolution 1366 by 768 panel, and the $750 version comes with a 1080p screen, and both models come standard with an Intel Core i5-7200U CPU, but you can actually pay just $15 more to get a newer Core i5-8250U, which is twice as fast on some tasks. This laptop screen isn't the very best, even the 1080p display has pretty bland colors and mediocre brightness, but the truth is, if you're just doing basic business tasks like using Microsoft Office or browsing the web, you're not going to notice that that much. The E580 can reproduce 80% of the sRGB color gamut, which is less than the premium laptop average, but it's actually not terrible for the laptops of this price point. The audio quality on this laptop actually isn't bad, it's one of the very loudest laptops you can get at this price point, and when it comes to performance, you're actually getting way more than you'd expect. This laptop beats the category average when it comes to manipulating spreadsheets in Excel, when it comes to transcoding 4K video to 1080p, and when it comes to copying files over. In addition, with its Intel HD 620 graphics, the ThinkPad E580 is powerful enough for productivity work, watching videos, and even playing some pretty basic games. Overall, the ThinkPad E580 is actually a really good choice. It's got a great keyboard, a great design, and pretty strong performance. If you've got a bigger budget, you might want to keep on watching this video to see some of the other laptops in this list, but if you're looking for an amazing laptop at a very cheap price point, this laptop is the way to go. Coming in at number 4 in this video is the Lenovo Yoga 730, which basically keeps everything good about last year's 720 but makes it better and actually drops the price point as well. The Yoga 732 in 1 improves on last year's model with a faster 8th generation Intel Core i-series processors, far field mics, dual Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, a quick charge feature, and then also support for Amazon Alexa. Coming in at $880, the Lenovo Yoga 730 is actually slimmer and lighter than last year's model as well, at 2.7 pounds and 0.55 inches thick. The grey metal chassis gives it a really premium look, and the slim bezels around the full HD resolution touchscreen make this feel like a really solid ultrabook. The display has good color performance, maybe not good enough for like photo or video editing, but it's adequately bright for outdoor use, and it's also really cool because the display actually supports Lenovo's optional $60 Active Pen 2 if you want to write or draw on the screen. The keyboard might not be quite as good as like one of Lenovo's professional ThinkPad models, but the keys do have a fair bit of travel to them, and they're actually very, very comfortable to type on. When it comes to performance, you're actually getting a pretty good deal as well. If you're willing to spend like $950, you can get an Intel Core i5-82 250U, 8GB of memory, integrated Intel UHD 620 graphics, and a 256GB SSD. What I like about this laptop is that it has a really premium look and feel, doesn't compromise in performance for the price you're paying, and honestly offers a really good overall package, so if you're in the market for another pretty affordable laptop, this is definitely a great choice. Now coming in at number 3 is something a little bit different, and it's something that you can make the case isn't truly a laptop at all, but it's a device I really like a lot, and that is the new Microsoft Surface Pro 6. Now this is all the features that made previous Surface Pro models great. It's got a beautiful 12.3 inch screen, front firing speakers, a brilliant kickstand, a really thin and light design, the Surface Pen, and amazing type covers that actually feel like a genuine keyboard. The Surface Pro 6 is just a really great laptop for taking around with you. It weighs only 1.71 pounds, or 1.73 pounds, if you opt for the upgraded processor option, and it's only 8mm thick. My favorite thing about the Surface Pro 6, and the reason why I've liked the Surface Pro line since it came out, is the fact that it looks like a tablet, I mean you're getting a sleek black paint job and a beautiful display, but the fact that it has genuine bona fide laptop specs underneath. You're getting an Intel Core i5 or i7 processor, 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM, up to 1 terabyte of storage, and an Intel UHD 620 embedded graphics processor. The only thing that sets the Surface Pro 6 apart from a true laptop is the fact that it has a really limited port selection, you do get a micro SD card reader and a full sized USB 3.0 port, but you're not getting any USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 connectivity, which is honestly just kinda weird given that Microsoft has already shipped these ports with the Surface Book 2 and the Surface Go. 
If you can live with a limited port selection and a slightly non-traditional laptop design, the Surface Pro 6 is definitely the way to go, but if you're looking for a more traditional laptop experience, you should definitely keep watching this video. My second place pick for the best Ultrabook under $1,000 in 2019 is the Asus ZenBook 13 UX331UA, which is a thin, light, budget-minded Ultrabook with an all-day battery life. This starts at $800 and comes with an 8th generation quad-core i5 processor, 8GB of RAM, a 256GB solid-state drive, a 13.3-inch Full HD display, and integrated Intel 620 UHD graphics. That makes for a really solid productivity laptop for handling everything you'd expect. You'll be able to do web browsing, word processing, spreadsheets, photo management, even some casual gaming. What's nice about the ZenBook 13 is that it's also pretty thin and light. It weighs about 2.7 pounds, or maybe 3 pounds if you include the compact 45 watt AC adapter, and comes in at 0.5 f inches thick, so you'll be able to take this laptop with you pretty much wherever you go. The keyboard is also really comfortable, you're getting 3 step backlighting and about 1.4 millimeters of key travel, which isn't a ton, but it's definitely enough to make it feel comfortable when you're like typing a paper, or just doing browsing on the web. The port selection on this laptop also isn't bad, you're getting 2 USB 3.0 ports, a Type-C port, indicator lights for charging and then also a charging port, and then also a micro SD card reader. The only slight downside is you're not getting Thunderbolt 3, but that's not really that surprising given how thin and light this laptop is, and given the price you're paying. The best thing about this laptop though is its really great battery life, it lasts about 11 hours on a single charge, which is really impressive considering its 50 watt hour battery, and that's better than most other laptops that it competes with, and definitely enough to get you through the day. With that said though, my very first place choice and the number one laptop in this video is the Dell XPS 13 9380. Look, this Ultrabook is as close as you're going to be able to get to perfection for under $1,000. This laptop starts at $900 and the base version comes with the Core i5 Whiskey Lake processor, 4GB of RAM, and 128GB of SSD storage. You're also able to upgrade all of that, you're going to be able to get an i7 processor if you want it, 8GB of RAM, and even a terabyte of solid state storage. In addition, with the 2019 version of the XPS 13, Dell fixed the only real annoyance I had with the XPS 13 in the past, and that's the position of the webcam. In the past, it was underneath the screen in kind of an awkward position, but now with the 2019 model, Dell has moved it back up to the top of the screen again, which means that you're not going to be getting any kind of awkward camera angles. You're also getting really thin bezels, it's called an infinity edge display, and this has been a hallmark feature of Dell's XPS 13 models in the past, a 16:9 aspect ratio, and a really thin and light design. While this might not be the very tiniest laptop you can buy, at 0.46 inches thick and 2.7 pounds, it's right there at the category average, and it actually undercuts say, the Razer Blade Stealth and the MacBook Air. You're also getting a very decent port collection, you're getting two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a standard USB-C, a micro SD card slot, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The XPS 13 also has a really really comfortable keyboard, it's actually been redesigned with the same key technology from the newer XPS 15 2-in-1, and while the key travel isn't quite as low as in the XPS 15, the keys do have more spring, and the caps are also less slippery than before for thanks to a new texture. Typing on the XPS 13 has always been a really good experience, and in this laptop, Dell's just taken it to a whole new level. The screen in the XPS 13 is also really, really good. You can basically upgrade it as much as you want. If you want to get this laptop for under $1,000, you're going to have to go with the non-touch 1080p display, but you can also upgrade it to either be touch-enabled or even a touch-enabled 4K display. If you do go for the 1080p display though, you're actually getting one advantage, and that's slightly better battery life. All of Dell's XPS 13 models have really good battery life, the 1080p version is actually the very, very top. Honestly, the really great thing about the Dell XPS 13 2019 is that it shows Dell's really willing to listen to their customers' feedback. Moving the webcam from the bottom to the top might seem like a really simple change, but to keep the bezels as small as they are while moving the webcam required some serious engineering. Dell's always made really good XPS 13 laptops, and it's hard to find pretty much anything wrong with the XPS 13. You can basically upgrade it as much as you want, or you can opt for a cheap version that's under $1,000, and however you go with, you're going to get a really solid laptop. But with that said, give me your opinions on the Dell XPS 13 and the other laptops in this video in the comment section down below. Make sure to check out the description because I've given links to where you can get all of these laptops. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And with that said, I will see you next time.